We call her the Silent Anzac, as her story has not yet been told. In 1915, HMAS AE-2 was the first Allied submarine to penetrate the minefields and swirling currents of the Dardanelles as part of the Gallipoli campaign. On the morning of April the 25th, as the Anzac infantry stormed the heights, AE-2 torpedoed a ship in the Narrows, drove off a Turkish battleship bombarding the Anzac landing beaches and attacked ships bringing reinforcements to the battle. All this while evading heavy fire from the Turkish Navy. As a result, she succeeded in creating a diversion that disrupted the supply of Turkish troops and ammunition to the peninsula. By cutting the seaborne supply lines to Gallipoli, AE-2 gave the Anzac forces significant breathing space. After five days of attacking Turkish supply ships in the Sea of Marmara, AE-2's hull was pierced by shells in a battle with a gunboat. Unable to dive, her captain, Lieutenant Commander Henry Stoker, ordered the crew to abandon ship and scuttled the submarine to prevent AE-2 from falling into Turkish hands. AE-2 then lay unseen in 73 metres of water until 1998, when she was discovered by the Turkish maritime researcher Selçuk Kale. Today, Australia's first ship lost in battle sits upright on the bottom. Pressure hull largely intact, conning tower hatch slightly ajar, just as her captain left her. In September 2007, we dived on AE-2 to assess her condition. A video camera was lowered through the partly open hatch into the control room, and for the first time in 92 years, we returned to the heart of AE-2 and glimpsed the fittings and equipment as Stoker left them. The hull is in remarkably good condition due to the low oxygen content of the water and silt in which it is resting. The superstructure, however, has been seriously damaged by fishing nets and trawl lines which heightens the effect of corrosion on this thinner plating. Well, what of her future? A variety of options for AE2 was considered at a three-day joint Turkish and Australian workshop in Istanbul in 2008. It was unanimously agreed that AE2 should not be moved, but protected and preserved where she fell in battle, and the story of the brave crews of AE2 and Sultanasar told. With input from Turkish industry, the AE2 Commemorative Foundation has developed proposals to complete the internal archaeological assessment of AE2 and ensure the protection and preservation of this important part of our ANZAC history. These have been agreed in principle, subject to funding by the Australian Government. The Foundation has erected commemorative plaques in Turkey and Australia and is working with Australian teachers of media and film company Sensible Pictures to produce an educational program and a dramatised screenplay that will tell the story of AE2 and have her contribution to the Gallipoli campaign duly recognised. We seek sponsors to become part of the AE2 story, helping to protect and preserve Australia's silent Anzac as we commemorate the centenary of Anzac and recognise the important role the Navy played in the Gallipoli campaign. Visit our website at ae2.org.au and join the campaign.